let's get into it. I think we're gonna have some fun with this tonight. Anybody remember what we talked about last week? What the title is of this, uh, the main idea of this uh, series we're doing? It is what? Good news. Good news. Check this out. You're gonna like this. I think. I hope this works. <laughs> Misspelled disconnected. That's funny. Okay. Oh, well, you messed up the whole thing. Imagine that there's a double N in there. <laughs> Spell check. It's disconnected. Yes. Okay. Disconnected is the title of what I'm talking about tonight. I think you're going to like this. It's good. Um, last week I asked you the question what is good news? And I'm not going to have you define what that is right now. But we talked about. Um, uh, I'm not going to have you define we, how we define good news because we're going to do that in just a few minutes. But. What did I talk about last week? I said before we get into what the good news is, there's one important thing that needs to be needs to be happening in our lives. Or we need to have this so that we're ready to hear the good news. Anybody remember what that is? And I, and I actually had a verse that, that talked about it. I'm going to put that up there in just a minute. It was a verse in... Yeah, go ahead. Willing heart. A willing heart. Yep, there was actually one other word that I used. Anybody remember what the word I, I used was? Um, start with a P. Pliable. Pliable. There you go. I use I use I use Plato, and I actually went back and watched the video. It was kind of cool. I was really amazed that I was able to keep talking and formulate thoughts as I was making that heart out of Plato. It was, it was kind of kind of funny. If you haven't seen the video, I think it's I think it's fun. You'll enjoy it. It's, it's 35 minutes. It is up on YouTube. There is a link from our Lighthouse Youth Ministries page. Um, if, you have, if you haven't uh, checked that out yet. So anyways, um, so I, we talked about having a pliable heart and Ezekiel describes it this way. He says, um, where does it say? So this is, I guess it's up here. I will take away their stony, stubborn hearts and give them a tender, responsive heart so they will obey my decrees and regulations. Then they will truly be my people and I will be their God. How many of you were in church on Sunday morning? Did anybody... Notice that my dad quoted that verse during his message? Did anybody like, yeah. oh, we just talked about that? A couple of you did? Oh, you did. All right, good, good. I thought it was pretty cool. Okay. I said pliable heart. He says a tender, responsive heart. Instead of being a stone, because you can't, you know, you can't do anything with a stone. If you want to reshape it or something, and God, we don't want our hearts to be stones in God's hand that he can't reshape. We want to have tender, responsive hearts. So when the good news comes, if you have a tender, responsive heart, you'll respond to it. Okay. Tonight, I'm going to give you a little bit of a history lesson. Okay? Um, here we go. If there is a problem, like whatever it is, if you have a problem with your car, or you have a problem, uh, um, maybe like, uh, well here, say, say a school burned down. Alright? If you want to prevent that problem, if you know the school burned down and you don't want it to happen again, what do you need to know in order to prevent it from happening again? Okay, but if you don't want, if, if it burns down, and you, you come one morning like, oh, this school burned down, that's not good, we need to prevent this from happening again, what do we need to know in order to do that? I got a couple hands that were up. Put safety guides in it and try to find the reason why it burned down. There we go. Find the reason why it burned down. I probably already put this up. How the problem started determines how the problem needs to be fixed. So, we're actually not going to quite get to the good news tonight. I think that's going to be next week, or is that week four, actually? We've got to set it up. But, the good news is going to be how to fix the problem. But, but tonight, we are going to talk about what the problem is. Okay? So, um, when anybody, if you looked at the world as a whole, as Earth, would you say that there are, is a problem or two in our world today? Anyone say, or would you, anyone sit back and say, our world is just fine the way it is, doesn't need any help? Anyone say there's a problem? Okay, so we know there is a problem. Yes? I like to say that there are several more problems than one. You like to say there's several problems. I'm going to come back and argue there actually, I argue there isn't. There's one problem with a lot of symptoms, okay? There's a lot of results from it. I'm going to talk about what that problem is, and it has something to do with that word I, that I spelled wrong a few minutes ago. Okay. Um, okay. Now, some people, however, there are some people in this world that say there is no problem. Okay? It's funny. They do. Okay? Typically, these people are falling into the category of maybe, well, 
technically, I don't, I don't think they really agree with the statement, there is no problem, but what they believe really is saying there is, and there are people that are atheists, okay? They don't believe in a God, don't believe in, in creator. There is also people that believe in this concept of evolution, okay? Now, uh, we're not going to go into defending, arguing those ideas, okay? But, basically think about this. Well, let me ask this question first. Over in Africa, earlier this afternoon, some of you guys didn't know this, there was a lion. And he was hungry, and he went out, and he caught, and killed, and ate a baby gazelle. It was terrible. Baby gazelle. Terrible. Oh. Yeah, I know. Awful. Okay, it was a baby gazelle, okay? Or some sort of um, type of animal like that in Africa. Okay, now, how many of you feel that that lion needs to be caught and put in prison for life, or maybe even executed for what he did to that baby. How many of you feel that they do that? I mean, is there anybody that feel this is morally wrong for this lion to eat this baby gazelle? He was trying to live. Yeah, he was hungry. Okay. Now. If he's hungry, he's hungry. Now, okay. All right. Now, I'm going to really, yeah, real quick, I don't know, yep. No, this they were out. It was out in the wild. Yep. Okay. Um, the lion didn't have the ingenuity or intelligence to realize that this that um, someone might not like him eating that. Right. Okay. Well, he doesn't have the intelligence or, anything, or to know that it's that it's wrong. Yes. I think that he's lazy because he doesn't want to do. Like, he doesn't want to cook his vegetables. No, he doesn't want to cook his vegetables. <laughs> So he's like, hey, I'm gonna <laughs> Okay, well, even if it was a big gazelle, all right. Now, we're gonna move on from this, we're gonna move on from this. Now, just say, for the sake of saying, there was a man down the street in Fergus Falls who was hungry one afternoon, and he went out and found a young child playing in the street and killed the child and ate the child. Now, how many of you would say that person deserves to go to jail for life, maybe even deserves the chair or the injection? Okay. Wait a minute here, now. Wait, wait. The uh, lion and the gazelle was good because it was not the same thing. It's not the same you thing. Know, okay. But I just want to argue this. I want to argue. Okay, okay. I, I'm, you're right. I agree with everything you're saying. But listen to me. Evolution says everything started with the Big Bang. Humans, animals, we're all the same thing. We're all a big accident. So in reality, if there's nothing wrong with a lion going out and killing for food, what's wrong with a human going out and killing for food, okay? My argument in response to that is, it's not the same thing, okay? All right, yes. All right. Real quick, though. What I was going to say is, like, but the lion is killing a gazelle, not yep. the lion. Okay. <laughs> well, there are animals that kill other animals of the same kind. There are animals that eat their own young. There are. Is it wrong that they do that? Do we sit there and say that is morally wrong? We need to exterminate all of those animals that eat their own young. Oh, what? Yeah, I want to. I don't want to stay up and linger on this too long. But go ahead. I definitely find an evolutionist that thought it was morally right to eat another human. Yeah. You're right. But my point is this: they're saying we all happen by chance. We're all part of this accident. Then how is one different than the other? Now I get that. I get they don't agree with it. But what I'm saying is you can't have both. Okay. It's like, it's the idea of having your cake and eating it too. You can't do both. Either you're going to eat it or you're going to have to look at it. Okay, I'm going to move on. My point is, as a lot of people say, atheists, if there is no God, then there is no standard for morality. You know, you could say, well, killing someone is wrong. And I would say, well, who says? For me, I can say that God says it's wrong. But for an atheist who believe there is no God, they would say, well, it's wrong because what? Because they're God. Because they're God. And they think it's wrong. So And they think it's wrong. There you go. But who are they to say that? <laughs> what if I decide I'm God too and I say it's not wrong? Well, then, okay. then we settle down a fist fight and sometimes a lot bigger and stronger than you because look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Alright? So the point is there are some that say, hey, ultimately if you're an atheist, you really can't say there's a right and wrong because there's no one to say what's right and what wrong. What if the atheist won a straw man competition? What if he had a gun? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, then, so then you're saying what's right might. That there are some people that believe might makes right if you, who 
whoever we duke it out, and whoever wins is who's right. Is that the life you want to live? Are you? Do you wish that the U.S. was like that? So if somebody came to your house with a bigger gun than you, they could just take whatever they want? I don't think so. So ultimately, those two arguments, I believe, personally, say there's nothing wrong. But I look at this world and I say there are problems. Okay, real quick. Okay, there is a problem. Thank you. Okay, so I was watching this, doc watching this documentary on dinosaurs, and there's this old prehistoric sort of dog-like uh, thing that... They made a movie. I want, okay, <laughs> real brief, because I want to keep going. It ate its young to protect it from eating, eaten by other dinosaurs. Absolutely. Okay. Um, okay, so, there are other people that say, hold up, here we go, there is a problem, but... The problem isn't with man. Man is good. We are all good people. The problem is, is that society around us makes us do bad things. Okay? Okay. If we're all good people, we're all good people. Society go bad with me collectively. That's what I. That would be my argument back. So you're saying I'm not the problem, like Nathan. You know all those people. You know that he kills and all that. It's not, he's a good person. The only reason he does that is because every, he learns that at school. He learns those behaviors in school. He was, he was all this perfect boy until he went off to school. All of a sudden he was around this bad society. But my question is then, so man is good, right? Right? What is society made up of? Man, and man's good, right? Society made of good people. Then how did society get bad? That doesn't make sense. So I'm going to say society isn't the problem. There's a different problem. Okay, here we go. I've got to get into this. I think you all understand my logic where I'm going. Here we go. The Bible teaches us that man was created for the purpose of connecting or having a relationship with God. But man sinned or disobeyed God and became disconnected from God. And that's when all... Oops. Okay. You're right. Technically, I'm wording this wrong. I should say that's when the problem began, but all the problems began there, is when man disconnected from God. And I have, all of a sudden, man was no longer on the other line. Anybody ever been talking on the phone and all of a sudden there's a drop call and you're not talking to anyone for anyone anymore? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's real frustrating, but that's what happened. We were connected with God, we were chatting, and then all of a sudden, disconnected. Okay. Um, so God created, right here, God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Genesis 1.27. So God created us like God with the ability to communicate to God. Remember, God's a spiritual being, and I talked about the last few weeks, that we, we, are, we are spiritual beings as well, so we are capable of connecting with God. Okay, so this is what it was supposed to be like. Here's a little picture of, uh, of, what, of what the world is supposed to be like. Before the fall. On Saturday, I talked about a bunch of us went out playing some football. And we went out, there was eight of us, right? <laughs> and we just had a good, fun time. It was just like perfect. And that was a picture of what the world was supposed to be like. Us and God hanging out, having a good time, connected. No problem or no problems. And here's a picture of us on our Mission FF last year, just hanging out at Applebee's, having a good time. That's what we're supposed to be like, okay? But man wasn't, connect, wasn't content with knowing God. He wanted to become like God. He, man wanted to be free to make his own decisions. Okay? And I'll illustrate this right here in Genesis 3, 1 through 7. I know most of you heard this before, but I want to give this to set up just the things I want to talk about here. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord had made. One day he asked the woman, did God really say, you must not eat the fruit from any tree in the garden? Now, is that what God said? No. No. But Satan likes to play with, play with God's words and twist them to make him sound worse than he is. I mean, to make him sound bad, to be good. Okay, whatever. Um, of course... Of course we may eat uh, fruit from the tree in the garden. The woman said, the only fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we were not allowed to eat. God said, you must not eat of it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. And ultimately to die is to be disconnected from God. Okay, and the serpent says, oh, you won't die? The serpent replied to the woman, God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it and you will be like God, knowing good and he said, you won't need God to tell you what to do. God's just mean and likes to control you. You'll be able to make the decisions for yourself. You don't have to do what he says anymore. So the woman's like, oh, 
Wait a minute here. So the woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and the fruit looked delicious and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she didn't need to stay connected to God. She could decide for herself. So she took some of the fruit and ate it and she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. And at that moment their eyes were opened and they suddenly felt shame and nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together, fig leaves together to cover themselves. Man disobeyed God. The Bible calls that sin. And God then set him free to make his own decisions. Okay? Get this though. This is so important. God all of a sudden says, fine, you now can choose what's good and evil. And the world we have today is the result of man being free to make his own decisions. Now, was that a good thing? Now, question is, we talked about what good news is. Here we go. If I said, here's your choice. On one hand, you can do what God says, or on the other hand, you can be free to make your own decisions. Which one sounds like good news? <coughs> Which one, I mean, which one really sounds like good news? Hey, I can make my own decisions, or hey, I can just do what God says. Kelsey, I think, was first? Make your own. Make your own. It sounds like good news. You tell me. Well, it depends if the person actually believes in God or the person didn't. So if you ask a person who didn't believe in God, yep. say, Here, I can give you two decisions, what you say, choose one or the other. And the person who didn't believe might say, I'll choose, do my own decisions. But if you have a as a Christian, mm -hmm. he'll say, I'll do what God wants. Sure, so some news to one person may sound good, to another person it might not sound good. That's what we talked about. Does, is good news gonna always sound good to everyone? Okay, is there, yep. You'd rate, you think it's better news to obey God's commands. Okay, now last week I asked you to find what good news was. I believe it was Ethan that gave me a definition. We finally defined what is good news. Is it something that everyone's going to like? Is it something that we're all going to want to hear or what? And how did you define it, Ethan? I don't remember. You don't remember. You had a great definition last week. Did anybody remember how we finally defined, if it's good news, how would we define good news? How, do we, how can we say it's good? Anybody remember? How we did it? What did you, what did you, what did you say? Think how we define it. Ethan, you said this. See if you remember it. Good news. Yep. Beneficial for all parties involved. Beneficial for everyone in the long run. Basically how we define it. Okay. Now, making your own decisions sounded like good news. Kelsey acknowledged. That sounds like good. But has that been beneficial for everyone in the long run, would you say? Has it been? It sounded like good news. Okay. And there's a verse, um, a few books in the Bible later, um, it says that Israel had no king and all the people did whatever seemed right in their own eyes, which is kind of like the government we have today. We have, it's kind of like a democracy where we get to vote on everything. So whatever the people ultimately think is right is what happens in our nation. And would we say it's always good what happens? No. It's not always a good thing. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. Okay. Now, last week, let's see, we already talked about how we define it. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to get into the main problem, and I think hopefully we get about five, maybe ten minutes, maybe ten minutes break in small groups here. We were created to be connected with God through a right relationship, but disconnection has resulted in death. And I want to talk about three ways it's resulted in death. I'm going to go through this quickly. First of all, we have a broken relationship with God. As a result of our disconnection with God, we have a broken relationship with Him. And this is why most of us will go through a phase in life of questioning who we are. We have a lack of identity. We're not really sure who we are. Some people never find out who they are. Um, the world will use terms like an identity crisis. Some people say, I'm just trying to find myself, I'm trying to figure out who I am. Because we've been disconnected with God, we don't really know who we are or what our purpose is. Sometimes we just like, I feel like I have a purpose, I, I, I feel like I should have a purpose, but I just don't know what that is. And third, we're not always sure what's right and wrong. See, if we knew God and were connected to Him, we'd know what was right and wrong. 
But sometimes we have a hard time figuring out what is right and wrong. Sometimes it's difficult because of that broken relationship with God, because of our disconnection with Him. Okay, the second thing is we have a broken relationship with each other. And here's why. Because when we fell, we became very focused on ourselves. Okay? So, if Nathan and I are hanging out, here's the problem. You'd think we just have no problem getting along, but the problem is, is that I always want what's good for me, and he always wants what's good for him, and so when we're only thinking about ourselves, guess what? We get in fights. And it's not that Nathan's upset because he's wanting me to have all the benefits, and he's like angry because, no, no, you should have this, and no, you should have this, and no, no, I don't, you, this is your toy to play with. Is that, is that how little kids always are? Is that how kids are always fighting to let the other person play with those toys? Is that how it is? Sometimes. I mean, when people are... Sometimes? <laughs> really? Unless they want them to play with it. As a diversion. So that's still a selfish motivation. When is anyone ever fighting for something to benefit someone else? Hardly ever. Yeah? When they de develop sarcasm. Oh, sarcasm, that's right, yeah. And that's a, so here's the problem in life. We became selfish, and because we're selfish, we get in fights with each other. We become disconnected from each other because we only care about ourselves. And the third thing is because we disconnected with God, we have a broken relationship with ourselves. I want you to get this. We were never intended to worship ourselves. And some of you say, I don't worship myself. And I will say, yes, you do. Because we always, because we're selfish, we always put ourselves first. And that's what worship is. Worship comes down to what you put first in your life. And all of us, if left to ourselves, we put ourselves first. In other words, we worship ourselves. We think happiness will come if we, we treat ourselves great and we're happy. But the problem is, is we were never created to worship ourselves. And what happened when man started putting himself first or worshiping himself is that he wasn't connected to the life that God gives because only God can give life. And we got things like diseases because we are, I'm unable to keep myself healthy. I don't know if you knew that. I can't do it. Only God can, but I'm disconnected from him. I'm worshiping myself, which is the wrong relationship with me. And diseases entered our bodies. Our minds and souls have become broken. Some of us, we, 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 we're just hurt and depressed. We don't always know why. We, like I talked about earlier, we, we don't know our purpose in life. Often we're confused, we're frustrated. Some people get depressed often, hate, hating life, wanting to commit suicide. Only God is the one who can give us life. But since we're disconnected from Him, and we have a wrong relationship with ourselves, we're miserable. Okay, so there's three things that happen. Now... Question for you. If the problem with mankind is disconnection with the relationship, disconnection from God, what is the solution? If the problem is, pretty simple, get connected with God and give something else you want to say. Or the solution just to end it all. Yes! Except we find out that you know death has some serious consequences if we're not connected with God. We know eternity isn't a good thing. Okay. So, here we go, verse, the thief's purpose is to steal, to kill, and destroy, but Jesus says, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life, and this is the last thing I want to go into before we break into groups, I want to talk about how Jesus came to fix these things, and then the next, next few weeks we're going to talk about how that fixing happens, and how that fixing happens is the good news, okay? Salvation is a fixed life. Jesus came, first of all, to restore our relationship with God. No other religion can give you this. And we're going to talk about the specifics of why Jesus is the only one that can give us this. But no other religion, philosophy, or way of life can bring you into a relationship with God because Jesus was the Son of God. Now, that is not a judgmental say saying. Some people think that when Christians say, well, we've got the only way to truth, they think that's a judgmental saying. Listen to this. If, uh, um, if, if uh, there was a rushing river and you wanted to get across it, and there's a bridge right here, and I said, actually, the only way to get across this river is the bridge. Someone said, you know what? I'd rather swim. Okay. Well, I'm telling you the only way is to get across the bridge. If you try to swim, the river's too strong. It's going to um, swoop you down, and over the waterfall, you'll, you'll die. You won't make it. 
they said, well, you're just arrogant for saying that. <sighs> no, I'm just, I'm just giving you a warning and trying to help. No, you're, you're prideful because you think you figured it all out. Am I prideful because I'm trying to save their life? No. Is that really arrogant by telling them it's the only way? We'll just say airplanes hadn't been invented yet. <laughs> As Christians, now some Christians are very prideful and they say, yeah, well, we've got the right way and you've just got Muhammad and you're going to find out that he's nothing or all or whatever. You know, we can't be prideful about it. That's stupid. But the correct attitude would be, look, no, it's the only way. If you try any other way, you'll die. Okay? And we're going to talk about more how that works. But that's it. It's not an arrogant statement to make. If I tell you my jersey is blue and you're like, well, I like green, so I say it's green. Does that make it green? No, it's still blue. No, oh, because it's navy blue, actually. <laughs> See? <laughs> See that? You might be, if you're colorblind, it doesn't change the fact that my jersey is blue. <laughs> we, can, <laughs> yeah, we can argue about it. It's, it's right. What if you're blind? What's that? What if you're the one colorblind and you just... What if I am? What if the whole then world is colorblind, but the person that... That's right. You know, maybe the world is blind. And, we'll, you know, Satan has blinded the hearts of men. And that's why when they look at my jersey or they look at salvation, they'll say, Jesus is the only way. There's other ways that work. It's because they're blind. They can't see. Only Jesus can open their eyes. Okay, yes. That guy's shirt is green. It is. Okay, second thing. Jesus came to restore our relationship with each other. He gave us this wonderful thing. We can forgive each other. My dad made a statement on Sunday that was so good. Sometimes we really have a hard time forgiving other people because you know what? They're wrong, and I'm right. I don't have to forgive them. They are wrong. They're being mean to me. I don't have to forgive them. Why don't they change and stop being mean to me? Then I'll forgive them. You know what? Forgiveness was never about who's right or wrong. I love this statement my dad made. Forgiveness isn't about right or wrong. It's about not letting someone else's sin destroy you or separate you from God. I want to tell you this. If someone has hurt you and they're in the wrong, what they did was wrong, you can still forgive them whether they ever change. You can. It was a beautiful thing God gave us. Jesus forgave the sins of the whole world before any of us ever repented or confessed. He forgave them before we changed. It's a beautiful thing. And that's how relationships are restored. Um, we don't get along with each other by, okay, and I talked about this um, a few weeks ago. If I really want to love Nathan or love Lexi or love my wife, here's a better one, probably easier for me to explain here. If when I wake up in the morning and I want to I wanna show my wife that I love her, I don't think about, okay, today I'm not going to cheat on her. I'm not going to smack her. Um, I'm not going to, and I think about all these things I'm not going to do, and by the end of the day, my wife doesn't go to bed and think, wow, Jeremy didn't cheat on me, he didn't hit me, he didn't swear at me, he didn't, he must really love me. Love isn't about not doing what, what, um, not doing things wrong, it's about what we do do. If I don't show my wife love by not doing things, I show it by what I do. And we don't love the world by not doing things, we, it's Love comes by obeying God's command, obeying uh, Jesus' command to put people first. And when I put my wife first, if I wake up and it's my goal to put her first, I'm naturally not going to cheat on her. Because if somebody makes an offer, if I'm putting my wife first, I'm just going to say, no, my wife wouldn't like that, and I love my wife. Or if I'm mad at her and want to smack her, I don't think about, hmm, I shouldn't smack her. I think about what would she like in this situation, and what she like, would like is if I served her and treat her right. So we, we love the world by obeying Jesus' commands, not by not doing a bunch of things. Okay. Second thing, Jesus brought healing to our minds, bodies, and <laughs> souls. And there we go. Look at this. I thought, you know what? This is just, he, he restored a relationship with ourselves. And I thought, this is just a perfect of someone that's just happy. Nathaniel just has a great perspective on life. Nathaniel doesn't worship himself. He worships the Lord, and therefore he finds everything he needs is in God. And he is just happy. His relationship is restored. He's content and happy with who he is. I thought, that's just a great picture for that. Healing for our mind. We have a full, a meaningful life, not because our worship, we worship ourselves, but we worship who our Creator, and our Creator is the one that gives us life. And then finally, we also have eternal life. We're going to get into that more in the future. Okay. Real briefly, we can only fix the problems. Oh, I'm going to get to that in a second. We can only fix the problems if we know how the problem started. Okay? I want you to hear this. Other religions only fix part of the problem. Most religions will deal with things like morality. 
And if Nathan, Nathan, or Nathan tried to, um, to follow another religion, maybe like Buddhism, Buddhism or something, many people do find some happiness in other religions. Why? Because they deal with morals, and, and, and Nathan might start doing things like not swearing. He might start doing things like giving to the poor. He might start, um, you know, maybe um, being even sexually pure or something. And he'll find some happiness. And people start trying these religions and they find some happiness because those religions deal with part of the problem. They teach you good morality. And so he finds a little bit of happiness and says, hey, I think I found truth. But that doesn't ever reconnect him with God. Other religions can't connect you with God. Some people think that drugs are the answer. And so they'll shoot up or smoke something, but drugs only deal with our feelings for a little bit of time. And for a little bit of moment, they feel really good and like, oh yes, salvation is found in drugs. This is how I feel. But drugs didn't ever reconnect them with God. It only helps their feelings. It only deals with part of the problem. Okay, some people try things like rehab programs. And rehab programs, they teach you good habits or they teach you how to deal with your emotional issues, but they never reconnect us with God. They only deal with part of the problems. And, you know, some people read self-help books, like how to cook better, how to um, be more organized in your life. And they teach you good practices. Help you, they help you get organized a little bit, but they never deal with the real problem. The problem is disconnection with God. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but through me. That's in John 4.